Here we go. And we are live, folks. Welcome to the Sit Down Standard, the podcast celebrating all the amazing things you can do while sitting, whether it's enjoying movies, watching television, or playing games. I'm one of your hosts, David Bray. I'm joined, as always, by Gerald Bales. Hi. And Gerald Bales. And actually a GoPro. We'll yeah. talk about that. New toy, new toy. New toy. So we'll cut some footage, some awesome footage of the GoPro in the, uh, in the podcast here today. But if you are listening to the audio version and you don't know... Go to YouTube. We post a video podcast every week of our podcast. And if you follow us on Twitter at Sit Down Standard, we broadcast the podcast live on Periscope. We just did a Q&A. Found out lots of interesting stuff. Yeah. What did we find out today? The forest. The Japanese... Talking about horror movies and not being able to sleep. Japanese suicide forest. I learned something. <laughs> yeah, good time. <laughs> so again, go to Periscope or go to Twitter and follow us. We'll have notifications on the broadcast or live broadcast of the podcast. But before we get any further, we got to start with the same thing we start with every week. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Ba da 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 da. Child oh, doing. All right. Woo! All right, Gerald. What you doing? A couple things. I got props. Ah, props. Um, read read a book in yes. two days. Uh, don't give me too much credit. This thing is just of over two hundred pages, but it's like sixteen maybe you can size see it. font. We got sexy Poe Dameron on there. Look at that. Look at so that. So what is guy. this book? Tell me what the book is. All right, this book is called Before the Awakening, and it pretty much it's three short stories. Star Wars about yes, Star Wars <laughs> stories that happened before the Force Awakens. Yes, one is about Finn, one is about Rey, and one is about Poe. No, it's like three different separate stories. It's not three like three separate stories. Okay, yes. they all meet in a bar, <laughs> <laughs> something like that on a desert planet. Catch anyway, it. so it kind of um, gives um, you some um, background into these characters. There are a couple things in the movie where you're like, that doesn't make sense. And this this book clarifies a lot of those things. No, you're not going to ruin really anything, cool. obviously, right? I don't. I mean, I can. No, no, no. Let's not. <laughs> There's do nothing that. To ruin about it. It's it a just really came quick out. Quick right? read if you're a big fan of these characters and stuff and want to dive more into the canon. Gerald's favorite word, right? Um, definitely pick up this book. It's an easy read. It was like seven bucks on Amazon. It's when did this come out? This caught. This came out like the week of the movie. Okay, and so this takes place um, before Force Awakens because it's called Before the Awakening. Yeah, some um, some stories like race story takes place like a year before Force Awakens and eventually leads up to it. Some of them different times, but yeah, they, they all take place beforehand and end each story pretty much where the Force Awakens. Begins. Give it like a general. So the Finn story talks about him being a becoming a stormtrooper, going through the training of becoming a stormtrooper, and right? exactly, yeah, him becoming you know, and it's some of the things like in the movie, like how does he fight with a lightsaber? It covers that they did hand to hand combat. He was one of the best stormtroopers, one of the best shots, so that explains why he shoots so well in the movie. Yeah. Um, a couple things like that. Um, some stories of some of the back, sorry, some of the backstories of some of the stormtroopers in the movie um, that are more just faceless, but kind of puts a name to some of those characters. Um, kind of shows his con- conflict with being part of the New Order, First yeah. Order. First um, Order. See, that's what I don't like. I don't like how it's New First Republic, Order, New First Republic. Order, Republic. Yeah. It's like... The, well, New Republic's gone now. We don't worry about them. But the First Order kind of explains that. Um, so yeah, really cool story. Um, yeah. And then you have you have Poe, who talks about his his rise to becoming the Black Squadron leader. Yeah, how he joined the <laughs> Resistance. Um, his, again, conflict with the New Republic versus the Resistance. You kind of yeah. get to see those things conflict with each other that's kind of cool um does bb8 yeah. make an appearance yes bb8 is yes. joining this so. yes that's right. cool like he talks to him like in his movie he's like what are you doing pal what do you want me to do that's cool does it say yeah. beep beep boop boop when <laughs> said no it just like transcribes said to english oh, okay else, yeah. um i want everyone to know this because we've talked about this before but this is the greatest bookmark ever this bacon it's bookmark. the one bookmark i use in all the books it's amazing reading. star wars and bacon are you kidding me <laughs> all right uh, what else are you doing man um, I read the first ep- issue of the Poe Dameron comic book. So speaking, still Star Wars. Canon. Still Star Wars, yeah. Still canon. I'm all about that canon, all the individual stuff. Anyway, so that takes place after right after Poe's story in this book, the the comic storyline with Poe begins. And it's just him working with General Leia to find the... I, f- I keep forgetting the old guy's name at the beginning of Force Awakens. Well, everyone thinks it's um, he's, he's Wedge and Tilly's. He's called The Explorer. He's definitely not Wedge, but he's called. He's known oh. as The Explorer. Spoiler alert. The Explorer. So it's him in the comics trying to find him because obviously what we know <laughs> is that leads to Luke and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, we, so we see that. We see you know the rise of Black Squadron in the comics. So that's really cool seeing that. I just like all these little holes that are filled in. Yeah, we were talking about this. I said I, when he was telling me about the stormtrooper issue with Re- or with Finn and coming through. I was like, it's not really necessary for the the mass audience to know, but it's cool for the audience that wants to know what it. Why does he? Why is he good with a lightsaber? That makes no sense. Or why is he so conflicted after one mission? You know what I mean? It kind of explains that. That's a long kind of standing thing. Right. That's really cool. I like the fact that they fill in those holes, and hopefully, I think they'll they'll probably end up filling in some of those holes. I- yeah. There's another book coming out called Bloodline um, next month, beginning of May, uh, that takes place right after Jedi and how. 
um, Leia, I think, becomes a general and kind of all that stuff. So that's kind of like at the other end, right after Jedi. Um, kind of fills in some stuff there. There's another sequel to the Aftermath book that came yeah, out last year. Yeah, the Aftermath year book came out. That like fills the, in that 30-year gap. Aftermath came out the day, the same day as Force Awakens? No, it came out before that. I think oh, it was just right it. before it, if Something I remember like that, correctly. Yeah. I don't know. It's always just such a blur from all the There's crazy. so much canon material. It's crazy. I just want to read it all. Yeah. We were also talking about there's a new Star Wars uh, kind of documentary coming out that talks about some of the extras that were on the original trilogy. Yeah, here, I forgot what it's called. Um I'll have we'll to look it, it up. Yeah, something. we'll put it some Future David, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So basically the movie is just following all the people that were dressed up in the Stormtrooper outfits back in the 70s and 80s. And then you have the guy who was the who dressed up as Boba Fett. And it's funny because they is all... Is he like ca- a really nerdy looking guy? I think so. I think Classy. it's... Yeah, it's... That's awesome though. It's like yeah. take off the mask and it's just like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but it looks pretty cool. And it's just interesting because they have a huge following. I mean, these people were just you know, essentially extras, but because of how big Star Wars and the fandom behind it, when they go to conventions, people want their autograph. Every little character has a name and has a backstory. And obviously there's the expanded universe, which isn't so-called canon now, but you've had all these years, 40 years of people coming up with stories for all these little characters. Every little stormtrooper has a designation and a story. And it's just, it's really cool. So I have a question, you know, obviously you have that expanded universe. Disney buys Star Wars and they say, we're going to kind of wipe that slate clean. This is the canon material. Are they going to ever allow for an expanded universe that isn't canon but still is in the Star Wars universe like no there's actually a petition that went up a bunch of people got together and bought a billboard and put it up in I want to say San Francisco somewhere that says please look at this film bring back the extended universe Mm. and make it maybe not part of this storyline but still make it like linked in some way and Disney's never going to do that I mean they want to keep their universe yeah, where a, it makes sense and that's good because the eu there's it's messes everywhere there's characters that are dead characters that are alive it's kind of all over the place but they have said that they're going to pull stuff from that universe dash rendar dash rendar Maybe. bro gosh I hope but I... they, they've pulled you know ships and stuff that were only yeah. described in the next eu and so all that stuff um so, so they, they can pull stuff whenever they want which is kind of cool because they still i mean they technically like the board gamer in me right so they have the extended universe ships and like x-wing the star wars x-wing miniatures game they because they have like a lot of like ships that are like the black suns which i don't know if that's technically still canon because they don't bring it up in the original trilogy or in the new i one. thought they were i thought they were in the clone wars maybe as, so they would be canon i think it's the black suns okay well one of the like smuggler yeah death watch is canon you know that's yeah and cool. they have like all the rpg remember we played the rpg so mm-hmm. that's not i mean i guess it's canon but it's probably not no. it's extended universe well you can't you can't create games that like have open-ended things could be canon because it doesn't make any sense just the it's whole like rebellion thing. being canon it's like no i'm yeah we'll get to that in a second <laughs> we'll definitely get to that anything else you're doing uh finished up better call Saul season two ended this week Nice. Um, it's really good. I'm obviously not going to spoil anything. So it ended. Um, it ended. It ended on. A, it ended the on AMC. Like you're watching it. You're not binge watching on Netflix or anything, right? No, no, no. no. AMC. The tenth episode. The finale. Aired, it's only uh, on its Monday. second season. That feels like it's been around for a lot longer. Nope, just a couple years. I guess there was a gap between Better Call Saul. A couple year gap between that and yeah, Breaking Bad. Better Call Saul. Yeah, but it's uh. There's a couple times watching the show where I'm like, man, is this better than Breaking Bad? Wow. Like, it's really, really good. Really good. You get to see some characters return from Breaking Bad, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, well, that was kind of a given. They were going to I guess that. I won't spoil anything. Yeah, don't, don't spoil anything. Um, I, but I, yeah, it's definitely like, there are a couple things that are like, man, I think this is better than Breaking Bad. But I haven't seen Breaking Bad in a while. Um, but yeah, there are a couple of those moments at the end of every episode where it makes you re- reach for that remote and like, come next on. So next episode. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely recommend everyone go check that out. It just ended its second season. So if you're behind, um, just binge them all. I think um, it's Better Call Saul season one is on Netflix, if is. I'm sure. They brought it to Netflix when the season two started. Yeah. So gotcha. definitely check it out, especially if you're a Breaking Bad fan. How could you not? A lot of these characters, and like I said, returning characters from Breaking Bad, you're like, oh, wow, that's really but cool But you, you don't need to watch Breaking Bad to get the story, right? I mean, it's 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 a standalone story in and of itself. I mean, it makes references to Breaking Bad, but I'm sure they, they try to fill in that gap. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the excitement of seeing old characters would be lost if you didn't see Breaking Bad. Right. But I mean, the story is still there. It's still a great story, so... Hmm. Yeah, I watched the first few episodes, and I think we've talked about this. It just felt so much like Breaking Bad. I thought it was going to... I mean, that make, it makes <laughs> sense. Like, what's wrong with that? No, 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 <laughs> I know. But I just kind of... I was happy with that story. I was happy with the way Breaking Bad ended. I didn't really want to... You know, it's like it's when something is great, 
you're like kind of like Star Wars. Like I was like the exci- original trilogy, like, right? It's like just leave it alone. Like yeah. it was fine. You didn't need to. It wasn't broke. Don't fix it. So yeah, but that I I feel like that when the new thing that comes out is crap. But this is really good. No, I, I mean know. obviously it's the same. It's Vince Gilligan and all the same people and stuff. Right. Same locations, all that stuff. It's just really good. You know my my wife's family's from Albuquerque. Yeah. So when we whenever we travel there, it's like a they have a tour, and you can actually the the place with the El Pollo Hermanos. It's an actual place called Twisters that they and they have the the giant octopus car wash. I drive by it. They they their her grandparents don't live that far from it. It's super weird. I know there were people that owned the house where Walter White's house. Yeah, they had people throwing pizzas on the roof and like they. <laughs> Come on, man! Stuff. What are you doing that? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I think they actually had to fence it off and like actually because yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of people go there. But it is funny. They have one particular lady that's there is called the Candy Lady. So it's like downtown area of uh, Albuquerque and it's, you know, like shops and stuff like that. They'll have like furniture and clothing and jewelry. And there's this one lady who makes a bunch of candy. Well, she made rock candy. Of course. Yeah. And it was blue. And she called it. Uh, what did he call it? Br- blue what was the name of the drug i don't remember i mean it's meth but yeah so it looks like meth it's rock candy that looks like meth and actually i believe the albuquerque police were like you can't you can't do that <laughs> you can't encourage this type of behavior um but yeah and i think she ended up winning she's like it's it's a joke it's, it's rock candy she ended up selling a lot of rock candy i bet yeah wink wink, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, anyway yeah that's that's pretty much my week david what have you been up to what you doing a couple things uh first things first um so i bought a gopro as you can see here this is the gopro silver hero 4 so it's not the highest, not the, the highest level one, but the second highest. I paid $18 for this thing. Now, Are you serious? Let, let me tell you how I did it. Wait. Okay. okay. So Plug. <laughs> Sell out, David. <laughs> no, I wish. I wish it was that easy. If GoPro, if you're watching, this is a great camera. Ding. I'm just kidding. Um, No, uh, did you know Sports Chalet, sports store here? I think it's most places, but it's I had an online store. They, they're going out of business. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so I had I went to a golf tournament when I got my first lawyer job and didn't I still don't golf very well, but I they gave gift certificates away if you were the best or the absolute worst. Guess where I landed on that spectrum? The worst, I assume. <laughs> so I got a uh, $350 gift card. Oh, wow. So I actually won that day, all right? Uh, but everyone made fun of me and laughed at me. And you kept this gift certificate for this Well, I long. kept it that long cuz I never I don't shop Look at me. I have a podcast about oh sitting. God. I'm not going to buy a bunch of sports equipment, all right? Come on. The best thing is like going camping is probably the closest thing I could buy. So um, so I had this gift card for a long time, and I was I was at work the other day, and um, coworker thing could, you used it. Yeah, coworker comes in, and he's like, hey, man, do you hear about Sports Chalet? And I was like, oh, yeah, I got gift cards. He's like, yeah, you might want to spend them because their online store has been <laughs> shut down, and they're, they're not going to accept any more gift cards at the end of this month. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So me and my wife go to Sports Chalet. And everything's like on sale and we're looking around and I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm thinking like, what am I going to buy a kayak? Like or something <laughs> weird. Cause I had 350 bucks. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, end up walking around and I see the GoPro and I'm like, Oh, I've always wanted a GoPro, but like they're kind of, this is like 400 bucks. Yeah. Huh? So it, the funny story is, so they sell for 400, I think on Amazon, it's like 330. But so I look on their Twitter account to see if they price match. Cause you know, they'll, you know, different companies are price match. No, no, they're going this, out of business. This what a best, jerk. This is the best part. I go to the cashier. I'm like, Hey, this is $329 on Amazon. Will you guys price match? She's like, dude, we're going out of business. <laughs> like, what do you No, We're not going to price match. Like we're not competing anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was so fun. I was like, well, the worst, I mean, the worst you could say is no. And I have to ask. He's like, yeah, I know. And he's like, plus, I don't want to lose the job that I have for the next two and a half weeks, which was kind of sad. But uh, ended up, he gave me 10% off because they were running 10% off, 10% off for Everything, throughout this. Yeah. So I ended up paying, like, I had another gift card for my birthday. So I ended up paying 18 bucks for this thing. It is awesome. I can't Record, recommend I saw it records in 4K, too. Yeah. It, and it's super small. I actually, when I saw it, I was like, that's that's it. Like, how is this going to record 4K? Um, and then I bought it. I didn't have a memory card. This is like when you uh, get a toy for Christmas. Because I came Batteries home at like, included. yeah, exactly. So I was like, oh, I don't have a memory card. So I was like, wait, let me go to Prime. Prime now got me a memory card in like 30 minutes delivered to me. It was the greatest awesome. thing ever. So I got a memory card in and I'm messing with it. Now, the thing that I can say, first of all, is it has a really wide lens. So it shoots in kind of a fisheye effect. But you can change that. Yeah. Well, you have to do a post edit. You can't do it on the camera. The so you have to. Camera. No, I'm serious. You have I to do it. it dude. Okay, well, whatever. We'll play with it after the show. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll teach David how to use this. Yeah, time. so the the thing I want to do with this is I want to, you know, obviously, get, I want to get a drone, like a cheap drone, because they have like cameras. Everyone else does get a shot out of the sky. Yeah. It's a hawk. It's awesome. Can't wait, dude. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll hopefully get some footage up with this crazy nonsense. And plus, we got to do that sit down and drive episode, so this will be perfect. Yeah, it'll be perfect. Nice yeah. wide shot. Um, but it's super durable. I, take it out, I took it out of the case. It comes with a bunch of, like, uh, waterproof cases and stuff like that. But the super slow-mo footage that I see online is insane. Like, they have people 
going down water slides at water parks. Of course, yeah. And it just looks so cool. Is that done all post, like in the program will let you do it? Yeah, well, you have the stuff? frame rate. You can pick on here. Like, you can crank it up, like, super, super high. Right, but people who, like, change from really quick to really slow, can that be done in post on the Yeah, they, it program? comes with some, I mean, it's basic editing software. Yeah. Not that I'm, like, like Steven GoPro Spielberg stuff. over here. But, yeah. Yeah, it's just basic. It comes with it. It's pretty straightforward. I like I like the fact that it's pretty bulletproof. And they can't, it comes with all the different, you know, uh, mounts and stuff that you can get on a dog. You can mount yeah, they have your... a dog mount. You, you can get the chest one and go <laughs> to your lawyer job and record how exciting your job is. May I approach the bench, Your Honor? <laughs> yeah, if you turn off that camera, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's one thing I was doing. The other thing I was doing this week was um, I uh, I watched a couple of episodes of House of Cards. Oh, the new season? So yeah, we're getting we're about halfway through. That show's so good. This is what's so weird about that show. It is predicting what is going on in the real world of politics. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's super, super who's, who's, creepy. Uh, Trump? No, well, they, they're talking about a contested convention, about uh, picking the vice president, and then they're also talking about um, some type of insurrection, and they it's it sounds like ISIS. I think it's called ICO or something like that. Yeah, geez. Yeah, it's like super, super... It's kind of like when you watch Homeland, you're like... Oh, yeah, this is too real. Yeah. Did you hear about that thing with Homeland? Yeah, I told you about that, the graffiti. Yeah, the graffiti was like in Arabic that was like making fun of the show. Yeah, and, like Showtime sucks or Showtime is racist. But nobody something. nobody actually checks it. I prefer, yeah. Come on, Showtime. Get your stuff together. But um, so, yeah, we'll watch that. I watched a bunch of Netflix. I'm trying to catch up on finish up on um, Firefly. I really like that show. I ended up buying the board game. Of course you did. Well, that doesn't take much. <laughs> but no, but I heard that game's kind of a it's a little bit of a long game. We'll get to a long game that we we were playing. Actually, we we've, we've are in the middle of. Yeah, we took a break to do this podcast. And we got to get back to galaxy conquering. Yeah, we're playing Star Wars Rebellion. We talked about this two or three episodes two ago. Episodes ago. So it's a Star Wars board game. It's like the Star Wars board game in my opinion because it just it's, came out. Yeah, yeah, it just came out a few about a month ago. I mean, this game is heavy. I mean, we we were resolving combat between our our two teams for like twenty five minutes on this I one. Found the rebel base. You did. You did find my base. Um, this game's great. Um. It, it, I, I got a chance a lot. The first time I played, I played as the uh, the Imperial, the bad guys, and then uh, Gerald was the Rebellion, and now we switched. Yeah, I understand your frustration. This game Granted, is... We didn't get, I don't think we got that far in that no. game compared to this one. And we understand the concepts more. And... Yeah, just like any big heavy board game, you got to play it a couple times. Mm -hmm. It is tough, man, to be the Rebels. It is just tough. Um, the whole time, you're. I'm just like... It's almost a... Um, a game of just try to it's just holding on like you're never it until never, you can put enough objectives down right and it never you never feel like you're um accomplishing anything you're just trying to avoid it's which it's, is it's addition by awesome because that's very thematic for like no it is but i think the universe obviously. i think that's important to know going in because a lot of board games like you don't like getting your hand smacked all the time you know like those yeah. the take that cards that are just brutal like just make the game not fun uh you, had, you need to know that going into this because it is it is brutal to be the rebellion like uh, there's a there was a part where i'm like i can't do any of this none of this does good and then well, <laughs> breaking oh, yeah. canon here we had uh um i captured leia captured leia Darth vader yes captured her that's we're so, her far, jail. so far we're, we're on canon land throwing throwing carbonite <laughs> Not in canon land anymore, but then it gets and even then stranger. And use the Emperor to turn her to the dark side. So now Leia is working for the the, <laughs> the Empire. For the rest of the game. There's no way to turn her back. I know, and I had she a card She is now out. Uh, agent of the <laughs> Empire. Damn you, Leia. If I can't get your brother, I'll get you. <laughs> That's right. No, but the game's great. Uh, all of the components are fantastic, even the little ships and stuff like that. But it it is very, very hard to be the Rebels. And it's it's just like I said, it's it's one of those games where you're just holding on. Really, you're just trying to survive. It's a survival right. game. And if you know that going into it, I think you'll enjoy it. But it, it's fun to be the Empire. I mean, it... Oh, it's fun. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so if you're going to play, at least play two games with your friends so one person will feel like yeah. they're the Empire. And don't get discouraged. I mean, that's it's like I said, it's thematic. So that's kind of the point. Yeah. And and I'm sure there's a strategy that once you know we play the Rebel times a couple times each, yeah. we'll get the strategy down and it won't be as difficult. But. And we haven't gotten through all the cards. Like there's there's different there's a deck of cards for both of us that kind of escalate as you go through the game, especially Maybe for the yours, Rebels. Yeah. Um, and we really haven't gotten through all of them. So I, it, you know, it's like any good game. Once you kind of learn what the other player can do at the, the same time, combos you can do, the right. strategy behind the game. Yeah, it just like takes some time. Capture Leia and turn her to the dark side. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Worked out perfectly for me. So that's that's what we were we're still playing right now. I still would give it a a good thumbs up. I so think would it, I. Yeah. Now after I played the Empire, definitely a thumbs up. <laughs> definitely. So. Um, the other thing, the other game. Speaking of board games that I was playing this week for what you're doing is uh, me and Alyssa are still previewing games when we did a review. I just I'm gonna go over them quick. Again, if you haven't watched the preview videos or Kickstarter previews, 
um, are our review videos. I'll put some links here in the show notes, and then um, check out that flip video. Yeah, flip a fast flip is what it's called. Fast flip. Yeah. So I'll talk about that one first. So we we checked out a kids game, which is uh, pretty cool because I you know I obviously love board games, but I got a chance to take this over to my uh, cousin's house and play with some kids, and they loved it. It's a it's a fun game, but uh, nice. it's a simple game. It's basically you have a draw pile. One side has of the cards has numbers or pictures of fruits. And then on the opposite side of that card is like an assortment of fruits um, of fruits in different uh, quantities. So what happens is you flip the top card, whatever, sh- what, if there's a number on the top of that draw deck, then you have to say the fruit on the other card, the arrangement of how many of them are, uh, of them are there of that. Oh my God. Let me try that again. Let's do this guys. Jeez. Come on, David. This is a kid's game and I can't even explain it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you flip over the draw pile, the assortment of fruits if the number, if there's a number on the top of that draw pile now, you say which fruit has that many in the picture. If it's a picture of a fruit, you say how many of that fruit. You say the number of how many of fruits are on that card. Again, it's not as difficult as Jesus. I'm <laughs> like, explaining. sounds great. Oh my gosh, Little no, kids it's, are love it. it's actually fun, even for adults, because it's hard. I mean, it's 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 quick thinking. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually got I lost to the kid a couple of times. <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> uh, but check out that video. It's from Blue Orange Games. Uh, they have lots of cool. They what's what I like about Blue Orange too is they do like they have a game called New York 1901, which is like a Ticket to Ride, medium weight family game. What did we play before from them? Uh, Pro Hees. Yeah. That was Pro Hees cool was really good. Uh, uh, what was the other one? King's Gold. Yeah. Fun Wink. little game. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of fun little games and good for families. And then they obviously have all the kids games too, which is great. So that's a uh, fast flip, but go watch it. I dance and sing in the video. So yeah, stay it. till the end too. There's a little post credit stuff. I always try to put little post credit stuff. We're MCU over here. Yeah, with I know. The, um, the, the next one that we checked out was a Kickstarter preview. So we checked out a game called Great Scott. The game of mod invention. Uh, I don't know if you got a chance to watch this video, but it's a card game, and it's one of those. Do you remember back in the day, the I think it was Guinness, where it's like brilliant. Remember yeah, this? Yeah. It feels like that type of time period. It's like you're Queen Victoria, or, yeah, Queen Victoria. You're the uh, scientist working to make these great inventions and present them to her, and you create your invention based on these cards. So there's like cards that have adjectives and cards that have. Um, like oh, that sounds fun. It's fun. So you, it's kind of like Mad Libs. You know, you used to, you know, back in the yeah, day, yeah. you fill it out, but you create like ridiculous things. Like I made the crab cremating, uh, cougar conveyance, and it was about feeding. And you have to pre- once you make out your invention, you have to present it. You have a minute to present it to everybody, and then people vote who's the best. Yeah. Um, but you also do set collection. So in addition to like getting votes, like you know, like uh, Cards Against Humanity, who's the best? I give the card to them. Um, in this one, you get points for set collection. So if you get like alliteration, like I just told you, crab cremating, cougar conveyance. Um, you get uh, you get extra points for that, but it's so much fun. Like I explained, like cougars run faster because we feed them the the burnt remains of crabs, and <laughs> and horses are obsolete, and we have cougars delivering ma- delivering mail now. It's a lot of it's a very silly game, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I like games that incur that create silliness, but don't force silliness. A lot of games that are silly. So I think that's my problem. I'm not very creative. So this sounds a little bit more fun than what was that? I forgot that love game or the story yeah. game. Yeah. You got to create like a story. You yeah. have to like create everything. At least the cards kind of help you along. Yeah. For people who are like me and aren't very creative. Yeah. This one helps out a lot on that. So that's uh, great. Scott. We'll again, we'll put, we'll put review or uh, links to the preview video so you can watch the whole thing. Um, and then the last one we checked out was uh, made from scratch. This one's excellent. So you're, you're a big home home cook, right? You made I, that delicious Turkey. Can't forget that. Yes, that's true. So this game... Right Gordon Ramsay over here. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Raw! Madam. <laughs> Good Gordon Ramsay. Thank you. Um, so in this game, you are competing as home cooks um, to try to make uh, classic recipes, meatloaf, uh, apple pie, all these classic recipes. And they look like the recipe, the actual game cards look like recipe cards. And they oh, have cool. stains on them and stuff like that that look like you use them. So it's very thematic. And you're racing to try to uh, collect cards to put them into the recipe. Whoever puts the most recipes... Uh, once the card is has all of its uh, all of its ingredients filled, take uh, takes ownership of that, and then you have to cook it. You have to prepare and cook it, and then you can run out of counter space um, or um, run out of ovens and stoves, and oh, that makes your cool. and then that makes your uh, your food start to spoil, and you lose victory points for it. So it's got a lot of mechanics to it, but it's super simple to play. It's probably one of the most thematic Kickstarter games I've ever played. Like it feels like you know you're you're cooking like. Alyssa, we were so we're, me and my wife, Alyssa, we were playing it, and it, one of the cards was French onion soup, and she's like, "What are the ingredients?" And I was like, "Well, don't look at the card. Just tell me what you think the ingredients are." And she's like, "Broth, onions, you know, it's like spices, you know, bread for the, the and that's exactly what's on the card." So like, it's one of those games where the mechanics of the game match the theme of the game, which is hard to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's made from scratch. Uh, fin- another fantastic. Oh, this is what I'm impressed with. Like these Kickstarter games are good. Like, you know what I mean? I like, if I made a game, games. it wouldn't be that good. <laughs> We're thinking of our own game, David. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it together. It's a podcasting game. No, I'm just kidding. 
most boring game yeah, ever. I know. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I did all this week. Okay. We got, we got some other stuff we wanted to talk about. The oh, big yeah, thing sure. in the news right now is the return. Now, this will come out on Monday, so everyone will already react. Oh my gosh, can you believe that happened in Game of Thrones? Oh my god, that's crazy. Oh, when... Cover your mouth and we'll fill in the audio here. <laughs> when <laughs> happened. Exactly. No, um, we're big Game of Thrones fans. I think most people are now. Do you think yeah, so? Who is it? It's like definitely pop culture now. Yeah, so we, obviously it's going to premiere this Sunday. We're going to be doing a viewing party. We'll put up... We're going to do like a reaction video. We'll put it up. It'll come out After actually before... Episode. This comes out, so we were so smart when we when we said all that cool stuff. <laughs> so smart! Oh my god, can't believe that happened. But let's let's make some bets because we've got a couple bets on going. We already have a bet going. We have one bet going right now. After obviously, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, yet, these are okay. These spoilers. are all spoilers. Okay, so if you're gonna if you're not and caught if, you, up, if you're that one person under a rock that hasn't been caught up <laughs> on Game of Thrones yet, you either a don't like Game of Thrones, you don't care, or b you What's, live under a rock. Yeah. Anyway, uh, all right. So so at the end of uh, obviously the last season, uh, Jon Snow gets stabbed. Yes. Freaking Ollie, man, for the watch. Right. Freaking for the- Ollie. <laughs> Anyways, the bet <laughs> I have you, is Ollie. like, David thinks, this is our bet, okay. David thinks Jon Snow is dead. D-E-D. Dead Z's, dead Z's, never coming back. Out of the show, gone forever. Super dead. Now, I, I do have a caveat. If they do like a flashback episode, that, that, that right, he's right. still I'm dead. I'm saying in, this, in, this, in the timeline, he's and, dead. And I'm saying he's not, coming, he's not coming back. Like, as a White Walker, he's dead. All right. I think he it did die, but he's coming back. Melisandre is going to bring him back? Yes. The the Red Queen. That's what I think. The Lord of Light. Hashtag Kit Harrington hair watch. <laughs> Hasn't he, cut his hair. That doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Is he doing other movies? Remember he did like a horror movie that was terrible. Uh, it's weird. He did you a know, tennis movie with Andy Samberg. That wasn't very that was, good either. Actually, it was pretty funny. It was you all right. You didn't enjoy that? It was all right. It was, it was okay. A so, but anyway, so like I think he's coming back. Yeah. Now, the thing about uh, um, Game of Thrones, we had a chance to go. We watched, and they, they didn't do this this year. We went and watched, I think it was season three, it was that whole defending the, the wall. Oh, yeah, in the theater. Yeah, we went and saw... We don't know yet. Well, no. Because that was the only episode they had in the theater. No, I'm saying they didn't do that for the end of season five. I thought they were going to start doing oh. that for the... Okay, so let, let's back up. So we, I think it was after season three when they had like the really big uh, watch battle where they had like... Or the wall, I'm sorry. The the wall was... was uh, where the battle was, where right, right. Uh, Stannis came and saved the day at the end. Um, they showed all of that episode, episodes 9 and 10, in IMAX at one of the local theaters here, and it was fantastic. Yeah, we we went to go see that, didn't we? Yeah, we went yeah. and saw that, and that it was, was awesome. great. And it was interesting to watch it that way because there's so much detail in the show, like the armor plating, oh, yeah. the the leather. You know, It's like you don't get to see that sometimes. I mean, if you have a big screen TV, you can see some of that detail, but on a giant IMAX screen, it couldn't beat it. The sound was amazing. I wish I could watch every episode that way. Um, <laughs> but, but, I mean, you have a you have a projector here. So yeah, so I've got a projector screen, but it's not an IMAX. Come no, on, I man. know, but it's better than my 46-inch TV. <laughs> So I'm excited for it. Um, we had a chance to, we were kind of in a Game of Thrones mood. We played the card game. The second edition came out from yes, uh, yeah. Fantasy Flight, the uh, Game of Thrones card game. This is the, what do they call it, living card game. So it's not a collectible card game. because so you, you don't, don't buy, buy boosters or any of that kind of stuff? Yeah, you buy expansions and everyone gets the same cards included. So it gets rid of that collectible That's aspect good. of it. Um, but they get out of Pay hand. Pay to win. Well, yeah. I would never like that about Magic. But uh, anyways, we played it. We we. I would say this is like super initial because we were just kind of learning and doing the bait. There's like a basic game that kind of teaches you how to play. And that's yeah. what we were doing. We kind of did a game after that. Um, what were your thoughts? Initial, not a, not a huge fan, but I, it's definitely one of those games where you have to keep playing it. You have to know the cards and I don't really know the cards and to get the good combos and all that kind of stuff and just learn to yeah. play more. But initial, it's like, eh, it's kind of meh, but I, I don't want to say too much about it until I play it a couple more yeah, times so- and actually get through a whole game. So we, there's a bunch of different decks of cards that are the different families, factions. The of houses. The, yeah, the different houses. Good job. Houses. Very good. Um, the different houses, and they have all the characters in there. And then you, the kind of the twist on this, I like there's two twists to this game. When you start, you get to actually take three cards out of your deck and place those out in play already. So it kind of jump starts the game. A lot of times in these these card games, you have to wait till like turn, turn three or four before you're doing anything. In this game, it you're already on it. Like right. turn three is turn one, which I enjoy. I like that. Um, and then the other part is there's these plots. I think they're called plots or lo- yeah, plots they're like missions kind of. Yeah. So in addition to kind of fighting each other um, throughout the game, you're playing these plots, which you kind of combo within your own deck of cards, mm-hmm. what you're trying to do. So it's, For it's that one round because the plot cycles out at the end of the round. Yeah. So, cause a lot of the card games that we play, they're, 
they're very similar. This you, kind of adds that unique twist. You know what? They're like episodes. Like this is the plot of this episode, and then you resolve the whole plot, and you move on to the next plot. Yeah, and exactly. different characters. Like so, there's three different types of battles you could do. You could do like a straight military battle, which is basically think like sword fighting. And if you win the battle, you can kill one of their characters. Pretty straightforward card mm-hmm. battling. Um, the next one is intrigue. called intrigue. Yeah, and the intrigue one is where you can actually, if you win that, you make the you get to. Uh, randomly take a card from the other player and discard it because one of the ways you can win this game is if the other person's supposed to draw a card and they can't so you can try to make them lose all their cards yeah yeah and then the third type is a power uh basically like a power battle and the way you can win this game is by gaining enough power tokens at any one point if you have a certain amount of power tokens you automatically win it's almost like victory points but yeah yeah i just enjoy games that have multiple ways to uh points to victory um because then like if it's always just one path to victory it's it's everyone's doing the same thing every game this one you can and i'm sure we had a chance i think to play a couple different decks i'm sure each deck and all the expansions have you know just like any kind of good card game um and they just did a second this is the second edition so i believe they've streamlined some stuff from the first edition oh we played the second edition yeah this is the brand new edition well quote unquote i think it's been out for like maybe a year okay uh but the artwork in this is insane i like the classic look of the character it's not like the movie version of these yeah. characters it's the the book version of these characters now they came out with like an if you're gonna pick this up there's like an hbo version of this which takes stills from the game but it's like a cut down version of the, i think it's like the basic car it's like four factions instead of like eight that come in this um but pick up the artwork one it's freaking gorgeous like yeah. all of the artwork in these games i'm just like man who is who is doing this anyways um Anything else you got to talk about Game of Thrones wise? Just excited. man, I can't wait. I can't freaking wait for this. It's it's, it's my probably one of my favorite shows. It's my on favorite now. show. Well, that will be on now that Better Call Saul is over. But I just hate that it's only ten episodes. It comes as fast as it as it goes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like just it's wet, wet your whistle, a little and then bit, it's and just then gone. Because they take like I think they take two weeks off for like for holiday. Some they take holiday. one off. Yeah, I thought they only took one. It just kills me because you're like that's. That's 11 weeks, like in a 52 week year. Like that's nothing. That's not even like <laughs> a season of football is longer than that. You know? Anyways, very excited for that. We'll put up our reaction video. We'll put a link in here. I'm excited. I hope our reaction video is like, what? I won the bet. <laughs> yeah. What pizza. was the bet for David? Pizza. Oh, it's so like just basic right. pizza. Come on, man. We're not going to make right. it. I don't got this GoPro. Right, what well, pizza place are we doing, man? <laughs> um, we'll do Rosati's. This is a place in Vegas. Let's get deep into All some right. Vegas stuff. Deep Soup. dish. Yeah. See, see what he did that wordplay. Okay. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about that I know this is, uh, kind of involving in the time or the news, uh, obviously Prince passed away, which is super sad. That is super sad. Um, but I had a Prince story. All right. Um, so my dad, uh, we, we, I grew up in Houston, Texas. Um, and my dad used to run a record store back in the day. It was called Cactus Records. And before that he worked at uh, sound warehouse. So this is like way back record store. So first of all, you know, it's a while ago. Um, and this was about the time when Prince came out like a little bit after his, his kind of his, his self-titled album, which would, I guess would be kind of his, one of his first albums. So he was big, but not Prince. You know what I mean? He wasn't like Prince yet, but he was big. He was very popular. So my dad used to, at Sound Warehouse would have these in stores where they would have concerts inside the store and they were free and stuff like this for kind of, you know, upstart, not necessarily upstart, but you know, not gig- not Michael Jackson, gigantic, or Prince when he was Prince, you know? Um, and so they had this in-store, and they had Prince who was going to show up and perform, and then they had More Stay in the Time, which was the wow. band, so it was great. And they had a, I think he, he was telling me they had some other Upshot band, that, whoever it was. And so, uh, you know, they had these all the time, and people would show up, and they'd have, you know, they'd sell CDs, and then the people would autograph yeah, it like afterwards. Small cover and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It would be, you know, they'd f- perform it inside the store, you know, because they uh, probably hundreds of people would show up. Thousands of people showed up for this, which was unexpected um, because, I mean, Prince, again, wasn't like he was, you know, in, in the... This is before Purple Rain or... Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So they moved it outside because they had to. There's just no way they could, the fire marshal was going to be like, you can't have thousands of people inside your store. This is not going to not gonna work. So they got a flatbed truck <laughs> <laughs> to perform uh, outside. So uh, so he, Prince was supposed to perform at about 2 o'clock. Um, and, uh, the idea was he was going to, you know, come in and then the, the, you know, opening band, then yeah, more yeah. stay in the time was going to come out. Mm. And then, um, uh, Prince was going to come in at two. So apparently Prince, the story goes, Prince is, uh, driving chauffeured. And I, I'm, I'm assuming it's a purple limousine it has to be right. <laughs> um, he's driving up, he sees this crowd of people outside and just says, keep driving. Not going to do it. Really? Yeah. He was like, that's too many people. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's not, then my dad. People are now, it's like two, it's like 245. You know, people get kind of so restless. The first band's already did it. They're, they're done. They're, they're done. So yeah, now it's okay. like we're waiting for Prince and everyone's kind of getting restless because, you know, like 30 minutes between an act. You're like, okay, yeah, yeah. wait, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. They're kind of getting angry, kind of getting, you know, upset. My dad goes, walks up on stage and says, 
Sorry to let you folks know, uh, Prince will not be performing. Ugh, yeah. Riots. People freak out, start throwing stuff, freaking out, which you wouldn't think like Prince fans. I mean, it's Prince. But anyways, um, he had a register outside that was selling CDs and stuff like that. They're trying to grab the register. They're going inside the store. He had to like fight the register off somebody. They had to call the cops. People are getting hit. So anyways. Prince riot. <laughs> the Prince riot. The Prince riots of 1983. <laughs> um so yeah, that's my Prince story, but I, I absolutely love Prince. Anybody who has a high-pitched voice like me and can make it in this business, <laughs> good for you. Uh, but I have, you know what's interesting also about Prince is kind of back in, I wouldn't know this because I'm uh, unfortunately not that old, um, but I enjoyed Prince, but I get, apparently Prince, Michael Jackson was kind of, you wouldn't think of it now, was kind of like the safe, like mom, like a uh, family, because you know, Jackson 5, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But Prince was like, whoa, like risque which again yeah, yeah, that definitely I mean, makes sense like if you look at some of the covers of his, his oh, albums yeah. it's like geez man even now today would be kind of an interesting thing but the thing i will say about prince if you go look and you look at the um credits on the back of his album he did everything i'm talking like arrangement he played the bass he played the drums for for purple rain he played he did obviously lead vocals he did the background vocals he did the composing he did everything he could play every piece of his music well that's what i kind of understand with that I, I wasn't the biggest prince fan but i wasn't really big into i'm not really big into music anyways i'm a top 40s kind of guy yeah or top hits kind of guy and i definitely like his his hits you know it's good music yeah um but i just i know what he what he's done for music yeah like obviously did everything himself he can play any genre he could write any song yeah um crazy good and it song sucks writer. to lose like a visionary like that yeah and he was kind of a revolutionary with putting his music on the internet he was one of the first to kind of do that i did a whole project back in the day about music and copyright infringement and stuff like that and that's uh, funny because he took all of his music off every single streaming service well that was fairly kind of, recently well that was kind of the well yeah but he always had a battle <laughs> he wanted to come out with an album i forget which album it was where it didn't have breaks in the song it was just one long <laughs> song so you had to listen to the whole thing and so I'm, i guarantee he constantly had battles i, I know they're they've talked about it with warner brothers like constantly battling with this yeah. his, his studio um, I think that's why he actually even changed his name to the symbol because he didn't want his name to be associated like Prince. To, they, he didn't want to give them the satisfaction of that, which just made him more popular. You know, of what course, I mean? yeah. Um, but yeah, he kind of led the. He was one of the first artists to kind of flex the muscle of like, no, I get to choose what I want to do. I'm that big. Whereas now you have like Taylor Swift, Tay Tay doing it. <laughs> Tay Tay, uh, she's fighting Apple. Um, but yeah, just just amazing. Go listen to Prince albums if you don't. If you haven't listened to Prince, it, it's so good. All of his music is so good. It's obviously you know, eclectic and strange and weird, but it's, it's really, really, really good. So go check out Prince. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything else going on in your life, buddy? No, no. All right. No, Let's, not really. Sorry. No, no worries. Let's wrap it up. Um, if you uh, are listening to the audio version, go to YouTube. We yeah, have the video version. We put faces. overlays. I take time. Come on, man. David Come does on, all the man. work. Yeah. No, no, no. He's on all the credits. Yeah, exactly. I'm the composer, the arranger. The producer. Um, but yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Sit Down Standard. Or, of course, you can send us an email. The email address is? Sit Down Standard at gmail.com. That's right. And again, just write us an email. Tell us what, you, what you're doing. Tell us about how's, your day. How's the weather where you're from? Yeah, right now Here's it's hot. It's super windy, though, right now. I was Seven afraid degrees. to... Yeah, the Santa Ana's are coming in. <laughs> the Santa the Ana's. <laughs> the Vegas know. is from Santa Ana to Vegas. That's the thing, right? Uh, anyways, until next time. Bye. See you.